Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Google Digital Garage training session on Get Your Business Visible on Google. My name is Benedict. I'm a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. Just a bit about myself. I'm an experienced coding specialist and digital skills trainer, as well as having a background in the digital creative industry. I've worked in the sector for over 20 years. I would also like to introduce our amazing moderator, Roshain. Roshain is also a Google Digital, Digital Garage coach and will be interacting with you and answering just about all of your questions via the instant chat to the right there. You can identify by the moderator, by her name, of course, Roshane, as well as a little blue spanner next to her name. Just one second. I just remembered. My apologies to those who missed it. I'm just turning on the uh, captions just to make sure those are running correctly. There we go. All right. Um, so just before we get started and everything, I just wanted to call out a few things to help you today. Now, firstly, if you're having any trouble viewing the webinar, please do try refreshing your page. At any, any point, just refresh your page just to see if that helps. If you'd like to join the instant chat today, and it's a great opportunity for you to interact with us, so please don't miss out on this opportunity. Uh, you do need a YouTube account, which you can very easily set up by clicking on the box on the right there. We will be pausing throughout this session to answer the more complex questions from the chat box. So please do feel free to fire away with your questions throughout. Now, just to let you know, we are running this Google Digital Garage virtual training as part of a broader offering of courses. If you would like to check out our schedule of upcoming webinar training, please see information on this in the description below, which links you through to our website. OK, so that, that is that part done. Now let us get us started with Get Your Business Visible on Google. All right, so today we're going to be covering three main points. Firstly, understanding um, your, how your, your actual customers find your business. OK, so first of all, finding out how they find your business. Secondly, building your presence on Google Search and Maps. And then thirdly, optimizing your visibility on Google, those three different areas. Now, before we get started with that, it's a great opportunity. Um, you could be speaking to one of us. We could be assisting and helping you. Uh, there's free one-to-one -one mentoring available from Google, OK? And we could be helping with whatever stage your company is at, whether it's building up the business plan, whether it's trying to increase the number of uh, clients, whether it's to uh, you know, selling more or getting more reviews and that kind of thing, whatever the stage might be, or using social media, um, we are here to, to assist you and help you. So um, thank you very much, Roshane. Roshane is going to give you the link there um, for the g.co forward slash UK mentoring. Now, at present, I'm afraid it's only within the UK. Hopefully, this will eventually expand. It's for if you are part of a business, a small business or charity in the United Kingdom, you can now sign up for a free one-to-one -one mentoring session. There's no strings attached. It's totally free. So don't miss out on that opportunity. I'm also going to ask you, please, now that you're signing on and everything and watching, starting this, this particular talk, if you could share with us, please, where you're signing on from. Um, it always fascinates me to, the, to see the different places, you know, different places in the world or in the UK, wherever it might be, um, you know, that you're signing on. So if you could uh, share that with us in the chat. That would be fabulous. I can see the chat as well, as well as Roshane. So I will look out for that just to see if... Um, but if you could share that, that would be fabulous. Thank you so much. All right. Now, um, a couple of the different stats we have here. There are three out of four online customers use a search engine to actually find a business. So, of course, the whole point of actually putting you on the map is a very important element. And 82% of smartphones are actually uh, users reported routinely conducting local mobile searches, particularly as well, those particular things, because people are using uh, particularly the mobiles more and more. But this thing of finding where finding the places of the different stores or the different businesses and everything within the area is often a very important element. So putting yourself on the map as well is uh, very important. Okay, so. Um, so how do customers find you? 
All right, so we're going to go through this a little bit. And I'm going to give you some uh, different examples here now. So, for example, um, if you're looking for, you know, if you, your, you know, your search and shopping behavior has, of course, changed a lot nowadays, <laughs> thanks to the internet and the smartphone, we're really here to drive local customers into your business. So let's really get started into the right mindset of those customers, you know, we really want to engage with. So um, if you actually take out your smartphones now, I mean, I know I can't see you and everything, but you can communicate and everything, that's fine. So if you take out your smartphones and you want to put in, uh, you know, a term on your screen or any any other sort of term that you would actually help solve this. So if you're putting, for example, you're looking for, for pizza particularly, then there's different ways you could be putting it. It could be pizza near me, it could be... Put down what you would normally do if you were looking for a pizza in your particular area. It could include something like the postcode. It could be, you know, put that down and sort of work out the different things. Um, if you shared with us maybe a little bit of the different ones that you put in, that would be fabulous. And then we can see the comparison of the different types of ways of searching because not uh, there's a lot of people who uh, use one particular method. There'll be others who'll be using a different method. So there'll be lots of different um, uh, different ways of getting these different things. And one of the big things is, of course, here with pizza near me. If you think of the GPS, which of course is tracking where you are and everything, when you put in pizza anyway, it'll take that into account as well for, as its food, particularly a place which will be nearby where you are now. Okay. So uh, that's just an, as an example. Um, so the big question here is how do you actually search for that product or service online? Now, obviously, it's not only restricted to pizza, of course, or food. It could be looking for many different things that you are looking for. Um, and what particular areas will you, will you actually use? So what, what will you search for? Okay. And what actual factors help you decide which listing to select? You know, so there's the first thing what you'd put in and then actually what factors would actually, you know, show you um, which would help you come to a decision. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, obviously, the big thing is working out the different things. Now, what tends to happen is people would often, if they were looking for pizza, for example, they would often start with pizza. And then, of course, according to the GPS, it would look for in your area. But, of course, there will be many different kinds of pizza which are being offered. And let's say maybe you only eat vegan um, pizzas. Then, of course, you would put that into the search uh, search query. Um, so you'd be something like uh, uh, vegan pizzas, you know, near me or something like that. But you would it, often it would take a bit of time till you got exactly what you're looking for. And that whole process, you're honing down, you're putting in more and more details uh, till you're getting what you want. Maybe it's a real Italian, you know, restaurant you want. Maybe it's uh, one which will deliver, you know, in 10 minutes because you're really hungry, whatever it might be. So taking all of those things into account is very important. So the customer online search journey. So first of all, there is the, the first part, you know, the, um, the search, what you actually put in. Um, as soon as you you kick off with a with the with the actual search, um, then there's going to be more kind of uh, you're wanting to put in more questions, more more things to define what you're really looking for. So then, of course, eventually there's a decision. So there's a search. You could look through it and choose one of those. That's fair enough. Or it could be search, no, nothing that like that. I want some, and then you could put more details. Once you've made the decision, you've clicked on it. Once you're actually on the page, once you've gone through all of that in the decision process, then of course your engagement, your engagement is with that particular website um, or that particular store, whatever it might be, or restaurant that you're having a look at and deciding whether to go to that particular place. Um, and then uh, the very, a very important element, of course, as well, is uh, finding out whether it is actually open now. That's a very important element, and that is constantly updated, which is really vitally important. Okay, now, so why is search um, important? Okay, so this 
age-old concept of if you build it, they will come doesn't, you know, doesn't reign true in the online age. You know, you need to be found in, as we've discussed briefly here, you need to be found on the internet through people searching those particular things in their search engine, like Google search engine, it doesn't have to be Google search engine, but with their search engine, the things that they'll put in, and then according to what they get as a result, the choice, okay? All right, um, I'm going to be putting on a video just now. I'm going to move myself out of the way whilst I'm giving the talk, just so you can see it a little bit clearer. Ah, um, Anna, welcome. <laughs> I just saw you appearing. Excellent. Welcome to, to this talk. I haven't missed too much. We just got started on the, well, if you, if you weren't here before, but there's a whole thing of the uh, search and the search engines and everything. This video now is quite interesting because it gives you the actual process of how actual Google search works, okay? I'm gonna take myself off the screen when I'm, when I'm putting it on, so I hope you enjoy it. Where those evaluations are consistent, the raters follow a list of- Sorry, don't know what happened there. Just one moment. I'll have to do it like that. Every day, billions of people come here with questions about all kinds of things. Sometimes we even get questions about Google search itself, like how this whole thing actually works. And while this is a subject entire books have been written about, there's a good chance you're in the market for something a little more concise. So let's say it's getting close to dinner and you want a recipe for lasagna. You've probably seen this before, but let's go a little deeper. Since the beginning, back when the homepage looked like this, Google has been continuously mapping the web, hundreds of billions of pages, to create something called an index. Think of it as the giant library we look through whenever you do a search for lasagna or anything else. Now, the word lasagna shows up a lot on the web. Pages about the history of lasagna, articles by scientists whose last name happened to be lasagna, stuff other people might be looking for. But if you're hungry, randomly clicking through millions of links is no fun. This is where Google's ranking algorithms come into play. First, they try to understand what you're looking for, so they can be helpful even if you don't know exactly the right words to use or if your spelling is a little off. Then they sift through millions of possible matches in the index and automatically assemble a page that tries to put the most relevant information up top for you to choose from. Okay, now we have some results. But how did the algorithms actually decide what made it onto the first page? There are hundreds of factors that go into ranking search results, so let's talk about a few of them. You may already know that pages containing the words you search for are more likely to end up at the top. No surprise there. But the location of those words, like in the page's title or in an image's caption, those are factors too. There's a lot more to ranking than just words. Back when Google got started, we looked at how pages linked to each other to better understand what pages were about and how important and trustworthy they seemed. Today, linking is still an important factor. Another factor is location where a search happens. Because if you happen to be in Ormea, Italy, you might be looking for information about their annual lasagna festival. But if you're in Omaha, Nebraska, you probably aren't. When a web page was uploaded is an important factor too. Pages published more recently often have more accurate information, especially in the case of a rapidly developing news story. Of course, not every site on the web is trying to be helpful. Just like with robocalls on your phone or spam in your email, there are a lot of sites that only exist to scam, and every day scammers upload millions more of them. So just because instantvirusdownload.net lists the words lasagna recipe 400 times, that doesn't mean it's going to help you make dinner. We spend a lot of time trying to stay one step ahead of tricks like these, making sure our algorithms can recognize scam sites and flag them before they make it to your search results page. So let's review. Billions of times a day, whenever someone searches for lasagna, or resume writing tips, or how to swaddle a baby, or anything else, Google software locates all the potentially relevant results on the web, removes all the spam, and ranks them based on hundreds of factors like keywords, links, location, and freshness. Okay, good time to take a breath. This last part is about how we make changes to search, and it's important. Since 1998, when Google went online, people seem to have found our results pretty helpful. But the web is always changing, and people are always searching for new things. 
In fact, one in every seven searches is for something that's never been typed into the search box before by anyone ever. So we're always working on updates to search, thousands every year. Which brings up a big question. How do we decide whether a change is making search more helpful? Well, one of the ways we evaluate potential updates to search is by asking people like you. Every day, thousands of search quality raters look at samples of search results side by side, then give feedback about the relevance and reliability of the information. To make sure those evaluations are consistent, the raters follow a list of search quality evaluator guidelines. Think of them as our publicly available guide to what makes a good result good. Oh, and one last thing to remember. We use responses from raters to evaluate changes, but they don't directly impact how search results are ranked. So there you have it. Every time you click search, our algorithms are analyzing the meaning of the words in your search, matching them to the content on the web, understanding what content is most likely to be helpful and reliable, and then automatically putting it all together in a neatly organized page designed to get you the info you need. All in, oh, 0.81 seconds? Wow. Anyone else ready for dinner? Interested in learning more? We've got a whole website dedicated to how search works. Just click right here. Want to read the search quality radar guidelines for yourself? Click right here. Okay, there we go. So um, I hope that's helped you a little bit of the whole process of the search engine just so you get an idea of um, how the whole, whole thing uh, kind of works. There's so many different factors, of course, nowadays. It's much more advanced than it used to be. Gone are the days where you have masses of the same word repeated again and again and again. You know what I mean? You've, it's, got, it's got many different things. One of the things is that you appear as much as possible on different uh, places on the internet because often people want to find out more anyway, if people who are, when people are looking. Um, but also, of course, the search engines as well, they will check the different uh, social media, the websites, maybe the talks maybe on something like YouTube or something like that. So there's many different sides. There's the backlinks as well. Um, if someone gives a positive review of you on their own website with a link, then of course that is a backlink as well. So there's many different factors which, which come into play. Um, okay, so that gives you a rough idea. All right, let us now continue. Let me just uh, welcome Smart Study uh, and Diving. Is that right? Uh, yes, Smart Study and Diving, welcome. Well, great to have you here as well. Welcome, so Anna and Smart Study uh, Diving. Um, so let's continue with this particular thing. So are customers searching for your products and services online? So, you know, the thing is, if, you, if you're not there when they're actually searching for a product or service you provide, you know, it's a missed opportunity. This is a thing, just like it would be if you were shopping in the, you know, the bread aisle, and there was no bread. So being there, of course, is really important, especially when the search is specific and localized. For example, you know, pizza, restaurant, Birmingham, for example. So how do you know if customers are really searching for your products or services online? Now, there are a number of different tools to help you understand, uh, you know, how to find out how many different people are checking out your website, okay? And don't forget as well, there's a lot of different talks we have online um, to help you with this, to assist you, okay? Now, um, you will see over here, this is one of the uh, tools that we have, which is called Google Trends. As you can probably see as well in the on the screen, you can see that it's really over time. So it shows you the trends when people are looking for that particular item, when they're actually putting in, in this case, plumbers near me. Um, we've done this particularly because this is from a long time ago when there were hardly any plumbers online and gradually more and more. Uh, people went online and people were searching online for them as well. Now, um, the big thing is as well, we've got this with 100% to zero. So we've got the peaks and troughs. We haven't got the actual figure, the actual number. If you're wanting to know the exact number of people at this moment who are searching for it, you could go into Google Ads, that's, that's ads.google.com. And one of the tools, when you click on tools and settings in the left-hand column, you will see there, there is Keyword Planner. That is Google Keyword Planner. You can use that, um, of course, uh, free because it's, it's a tool which is provided once you have registered with Google Ads. Okay. 
So I think we've just finished the first 20 minutes, which is ideal because we've got three sections. So pausing for questions. Are there any questions at present? Um, do fire away because we're here to assist you and help you. Um, and okay, no questions at present. All right. So don't forget, we're here to help. Here, try that again. We are here to help you and assist you. So any questions whilst we're working through this um, about what we're covering? Please do fire away with your questions because we love to assist you and help you. Um, obviously, with the knowledge that we have. Okay. So let us now have a look at where to actually build your presence on Google. So let's go through this a little bit. Now, um, the big thing is know where your business can be seen, of course, in the search. Now, you will see here, um, you know, your goal, of course, is to create the most relevant list results possible, you know, to really help searchers find what you're really looking, what they're really looking for. Now, the results page includes links to websites, but you might also see local business listings as well, or items for sale, advertisements, images, maps, videos, and many more different things. Now, the images at the at the top are actually shopping ads, promoting products, you know, sold by online retailers. Text ads can appear just below. You know, it's got ad on the corner. You will see there with the example we have there, uh, at the top there, this is the search query. So that is the keyword. Keyword meaning one or more words which are put into the search query. And then, of course, just underneath, um, you've got the ads. You can see the pictures there at the top. And then, of course, um, there's ones which are going for what's called a um, search campaign. Search campaign would appear in this kind of place, and you, and you would be bidding on certain keywords. If you won the bidding, then your advertisement would appear there. Now, I don't know if you can see there. Um, let me just quickly move it like this so you can. Uh, no, it's not helping. Let me try that again. Um, there we go. So uh, you can see it a little bit more clearly. So you've got there the ad there. You can see ad on the left-hand side. And then, of course, underneath that, there is the organic search result. And on the right-hand side, that is a Google business profile. OK, so that is the um, Google business profile, which is uh, showing you particularly uh, St Stasia's Bakery. All right. And the big thing, of course, you can actually have that set up and running and it's you don't have to pay anything at all. So it's a great opportunity. Um, so these are the different places. Um, one of the big things is um, the Google business profile operates according to the map. So if the person is looking in the particular area um, or wh whether they're in the area or they're looking out for that particular area and they've got that particular area in what they're searching, um, and yours is the only company who provides this uh, in your particular area, then it will appear on the right-hand side. If not, it'll appear in a little Google map with pinpoints of different businesses. Okay. So, um, so organic results, of course, appear in the center right at the bottom. And of course, it does take a bit of time to be able to get there till eventually you are listed in the top 10. Uh, it is quite complicated, it's quite, it's quite lengthy, and obviously you've got to work towards it, obviously, with the search engine optimization. Um, but certainly the quickest way would be an ad um, and or um, the Google business profile on the right hand side. So your next question um, might be, what words and phrases do people search for, particularly people who are shopping? OK, so let's have a look at a couple of the different things. Um, but before we do that there, so three areas, you know, you can be found on Google. So it could be organic search, could be a business listing, um, or it could be a paid search. Now, of course, the business, local business listings are online uh, portfolios that contain information about your business, uh, name, address, phone number, hours, and other information. And then, of course, the paid search. Paid search advertising is a marketing method where you pay for your website to appear in the paid advertising sections. And, of course, you bid. And every time a person clicks on that advertisement, you are paying that amount that you've, you've bid you. Uh, for that particular advertisement. Whenever you're using Google Ads or any other kind of ads, please make sure that you do set a budget. That's a limit to how much you're willing to invest for that day, for that week, for that month, whatever it might be. Okay. 
So search engine optimization, of course, it is uh, the practice of increasing the quantity and quality of traffic to your website through organic search engine results. I know it's quite a mouthful, but, but to put it quicker and an easier way to understand, hopefully, it's just getting more people and the right kind of people, therefore the quality, the right kind of people who are really looking for what you provide to your website, okay, through a largely organic search result, through appearing in the right places with the right keywords, all of those different elements, uh, the more and more you can get closer to attracting the right kind of people. Now, obviously, it helps your website show up in, you know, in the results. So it makes it easier for people to find you when they're actually searching for what you offer. All right. The big thing is one of the big areas um, is uh, that your website is search engine friendly. In other words, the search engine can find out a lot of important, correct information about this website. And uh, you saw actually in that video, they talk about the particular listings and everything to make sure they follow certain protocol and everything. And if it does follow those things, then of course, it's even more search engine friendly. Okay, um, so optimize for success. So, of course, one of the big things I must state here now that there is no shortcut for search engine optimization, which, you know, helps you improve your website's visibility to people who are searching for products or services like yours, just like that. It, it takes a long time, a lot of different connections to really get it ranked quite highly. Now, keyword research, discovering what words or phrases people are looking for when they are searching for products and services related to your business. Now, um, on-page optimization or changes you can make on your website's individual pages can quickly help search engines better understand your content. Now, don't forget there is um, what's called a Google um, uh, what I'm going to say, Google Search uh, Console. Now, the Google Search Console will give you a lot of the feedback. One of the things, it'll tell you the ranking of your pages, and you can click on the button to optimize, um, to, to get it uh, re-ranked, to get it checked again by Google. And then, of course, when you're there, you can always see the last time Google checked out your website and those particular pages, especially if you've done an update of the page. That's Google Search Console, another piece of free software as well. OK, so understanding your user content. Now, we are becoming, uh, of course, research obsessed uh, with search. People can get really specific and still have confidence that they will get useful information from the search engine. And of course, one of the things is as well, if you put in just pizza, that's that's quite general and you get a lot of different responses. But if you put in, the, as we were talking about it earlier, the more you're going now, well, I have vegan or have I want the Italian or I want the Italian music in the restaurant, all these different factors, um, it's getting more and more specific, what's called a long tail keyword, it's got many words. And when, when you've got that, then you're gonna get less and less people but less and less people doesn't always mean less and less opportunity because if people are putting in those particular words, I imagine they're really looking for exactly that if that's what relates to your, your website as well. So let's use this example here. So, so if we take uh, shoes, for example. So you know people want to learn about the best ones, of course, and in some very personal and particular ways. So here are a few approaches to mobile searches. So understand your user intent. You know, at the heart of every Google search, there's a user with a purchase related intention, whatever that might be, to find reviews, products, to buy, price comparisons. The list, you know, is pretty much endless. A lot of people go there to come to decisions as well. But understanding your user content we've got here, so you've got the short keywords, trainers, the what's called, as I was saying before, the long tail keywords. Um, so trainers, which would be best running trainers for flat feet. There we go. And then shoes for nurses, uh, short keywords across to durable shoes for nurses. Okay. And then we've got this one here. So we've got uh, uh, trail running shoes, and then we've got best trail running shoes for winter, and then comfortable shoes, comfortable shoes for plantar fasciitis. I think you pronounced it correct. I'm pronouncing it correctly. So there's all of these different things. The more specific, um, and of course, those people who are putting really specific long tail keywords, they will really be looking out 
I imagine, just for that, those particular things, okay? All right. So discover how Google sees your site. This is a big thing. Now, this is what I was talking about before, Google Search uh, Console. So um, you can go on to uh, this particular one. Um, thank you, Roshain. Roshain will give you, has already given you the, the, the link there for uh, Search Console. So it's, it's there to help you and assist you. It'll give you a lot of feedback. It'll give you things like, you know, if you've got images, um, are your images optimized for the web? Now, that doesn't mean the lighting, the coloring, or anything like that. It means that you are um, making sure that it's as light as possible so that it loads quickly onto the page. Um, or it could be something like uh, alternate text, so people who can't see or have problems with their site, if, it, if they've got their computer reading it to them, you know, then uh, it, it helps. And it's also used by search engines. So there's many different factors to help you. Um, but the big thing here as well is you've got uh, what is very useful as well about Google Search Console, other than the ranking of the pages, which I mentioned, it also gives you the keywords that people found your website with, okay? And that can really help you masses as well. And you can see how you rank on Google as well. So there's many different factors and things to help you and assist you. Um, it is a little bit difficult sometimes to work out some of these different things, but you know, it's giving you keywords. Are these the right keywords? You, you need to develop a negative keyword, a negative keyword, you can minus before it, and that means that it'll it will not be including, but not it'll be excluding people looking for that particular thing if you're getting the wrong crowd, all those kind of things. Okay. Okay. Um and of course, you can see, you know, reports that tell you which queries cause your site to appear in search results, which websites linked to your site, if your site works well on mobile devices, and lots more. Of course, that will be very important. That it is what's called often nowadays dynamic. So it's dynamic to your, it will shrink to the mobile to as well as desktop. If you are designing it on your laptop, you can always just check by shrinking the size of the screen of that window till it's small and it should change to mobile. That's a nice simple way of testing it. Um, of course, data collection for a property starts as soon as a property is added in any Search Console account, even before it's verified. But it may take some time, you know, before diagnostic and other data is actually available to see in the reports. Now, this is normal. It can take some time for Search Console to gather and process data for your site. So data collection, you know, continues as long as any user has that property in their account, whether or not it has, uh, whether it, whether or not it's a verified owner. So data is only retained for a certain period of time, however, before it is deleted. You know, usually ninety days. Okay, uh, that's another thing as well. If there's anything you missed in this talk, or maybe the beginning, or any part of the talk you want to go over, or anything to check. Uh, don't forget when I finish this talk up till 24 hours after, ho hopefully, you know, the, so long as everything works correctly, um, you should be able to see the video. So you can go back. Same Earl, just go back. Um, obviously, don't do it now, you miss out on the chat. But it's, it's an opportunity. You can go back over the particular areas. All right. So, um, all right, now, so local search engine optimization is all about increasing search visibility, you know, for businesses that serve their communities, particularly face-to-face. -face. So, um, you know, the cornerstone of this particular activity is to get your business listed on directories such as Google My Business. Um, it used to be called, sorry, it used to be called Google My Business, now it's Google Business Profile and directories such as Google Business Profile. So local directories are a great way for local businesses to actually connect with potential customers in their area. And of course, as you know, um, if you're using, um, you, you could have a Google map there and it's telling you the information, it's telling when it's open, all sorts of different things like that. So these online listings include your key information, like your business name, your address, your telephone number. One of the best ways to connect with customers online is to get listed in local directories. Now, Google Maps also considers other factors like relevancy, distance, and performance. Now, relevancy is how well a business listing matches a search, of course. 
That's what always Google is trying to do. If your listing is detailed and up to date, Google is more likely to show it for relevant searches. Now, distance is just like it sounds. How close is the business to the searcher or the area specified? And prominence is gauged by how well known the business is based on information Google can actually find across the web. All right. Now, um, Google Business Profile uh, actually gives you uh, the ability to actually be visible on Google Maps. Um, so, it's, so mobile search, you know, has been steadily on the rise. It's now about half of all or more of all searches on Google. So people searching on mobile phones frequently look for businesses nearby, adding the phrase near me, for example. Uh, data shows ha that Google near me searches have increased by two times over the past year. So that's a very, very important element. Okay. So this is now with the Google Maps and everything. And you can see, you can see there on the right hand side, these are both actually, you've got the Google Maps there. And on the side, you've got the Google Business Profile. And then the just with the mobile, you've got there the Google Business Profile. You can see the opening hours and everything. And you've got to make sure that your opening hours, if you are closed over Easter or something like that, that you make sure that it's updated on Google Business Profile. I do have a friend who went to Fish and Chips. And uh, according to the information he could get from Google Business Profile, it was open. It was closed. I don't think he ever went back to that fish and chip shop again. So make sure your information, out of respect, obviously, to your client, is up to date, of course. OK. Um, so four steps to create a Google business profile. So download particularly the app and sign in. So that's business.google.com. So business.google.com. Then you add or select your business. So what kind of particular area it is and everything. Um, sorry, what I mean by that, I mean what kind of industry it is. Enter your information and then verify your listing. All right. Each of those different stages. Now, one of the things I'm going to repeat again, but just to make sure you're clear on this, when you first start with uh, Google Business Profile, they will ask you your address. That is the first question that comes up right at the beginning. Now, please remember that is for Google for later for sending you verification, postcard, or whatever. If you work from home and you really don't, of course, want your, your home uh, listed for the business, you can later make sure you look out for this. For the public, you can choose a region. Okay. All right. Now, whilst you can se select a region and there's nothing wrong with selecting a region, I have done, I've, you know, to a certain extent, the easiest thing for Google Maps to relate to is really a place, um, a point on a map, you know. Uh, whereas Google, with the regions, sometimes with the adjoining regions or so things like that can get a little bit more complicated and and might not be as satisfying. So ideally, if you have an address, but you don't have to have one, not at all. And the point is the the address that you give right at the beginning for Google to verify that you really do own this. You send a postcard and everything with the with the code to put in the head of your website and everything. The whole point is. Google really doesn't, it doesn't matter where, where this address is. There's a point is so that they can communicate with you. Okay, um, so let me see now. You added your home address, but can't still verify your online YouTube business. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, okay, so, well, certainly the first people to contact, I mean, obviously <laughs> I can point you in the right directions and everything, but you need to ideally speak to uh, Google Business Profile because there's always of the different divisions of Google, you can see the question mark with a circle around it. You can click on that and contact, send an email saying I've registered this. The other side is if you haven't even, uh, but you haven't verified your YouTube business, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a bit odd. So that it hasn't actually been posted to you. The, about the only other way of, the only other way I can think of doing it immediately is just verify it again, send that send that address, because they won't have ticked that off as a word that is verified. But if you send it off again and to verify it, then they could send it across to you. 
Um, so let me see now, Patrick, welcome Patrick. Uh, so you don't need uh, an address to offer services in another area. You don't have to have an address, no, but of course for your business, you need to verify it and that's where often a piece of code comes in. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that uh, smart study and diving. Uh, all I can suggest is of course, I'm afraid you just have to keep um, sending. And the other thing is you could try going through the whole process again and then verify it and everything at the end. That's what I'd recommend. Um, I know it's hard and uh, difficult. I'm sorry about that. Uh, often it's difficult to get hold of them, but if you, you've you got to keep, keep, keep working on that and hopefully eventually you should be able to get through, okay? All right, so um, let us now go through now a couple of different things. So one of the big things when you have your Google business profile is show people and of course search engines that you're active you know update your business information you know add photos of your business and team ideally something like behind the scenes you know this uh, 360 you know you can actually get uh, professional ones to do that um, so people can get real feel for your business um, maybe you know add a virtual tour and always uh, always respond to you know review good or bad reviews it's very important to respond proactively we've got a talk actually on writing for social media and with there we do discuss responding to positive and negative and it, and people i mean well i mean i speak for myself i often look down the line of reviews looking for something negative and then i'll look for how it was responded to by the company um so that's an important element. And I do think there will always be some negative review. So to a certain extent, I sometimes feel it gives me as kind of verification that I can trust these people, that they're not paying someone for these you know, special reviews. So they're going to come up, I'm afraid, bad reviews as well. Um, and of course, you know, customers are searching locally for business. Every month, Google helps to drive more than... Um, one, uh, I think it's 1,008 visits to business websites, more than 700 million phone calls and more than 2 billion direction requests. So there's masses at the moment. And of course, to qualify for a business listing, a business must meet with customers face-to-face -face at a store or within a specific, uh, specified um, local service area. Okay, it's important, of course, that a business information appears and appears correctly when people search online. And of course, with the Google local search and map listings, Google uh, considers lots of factors like relevancy, distance, and prominence. I'm afraid, obviously, with region, you know, that can't be as easy to work out. Now, relevancy is how well a business listing matches a search. If your listing is detailed and up to date, Google is more likely to show it for relevant searches. And Distance is just like it sounds. How close is the business to the searcher or the area specified? And prominence is gauged by how well known the business is based on information Google can actually find across the web. Because the more places people are connected, you know, the more the the more um, they can find out about the, of course, this particular business. So the more places you can be appearing, the better. Okay. All right, so uh, search engine marketing, of course, here we've got is used uh, paid advertising to ensure that a business's products or searches or services are visible in search engine results. Um, so this is a big thing. Um, so with the search engine marketing, and of course, this is where you're paying. Of course, as you know, you could put a post there for on on any kind of social um, social media, and normally you won't be paying for it. But as soon as you boost it, for example, then of course this is search engine marketing. And then you can actually, because if you think about it, normally the ones which you put on there, the posts or the videos or whatever it might be, people who are following you will see that, but other people won't so much. Um, so with this, you can really target who you're marketing to, okay? Um, so where so where can search ads appear? So now 
Um, Google Ads, of course, is a Google's advertising platform that allows you to create search, display, and YouTube ad campaigns, all of those. So as with most online advertising channels, Google decides which ads are shown in which positions based on, often on the auction as well, when you're bidding for a particular auction. And up to seven ad slots available across each search engine results page. The top four tend to be the most competitive, as this is where most users really click. Okay. Um, the closed ones first, not. Ah, okay, that's interesting, Patrick. So you've got here, it seems to me that when I search for a service, it shows the closed ones find not necessarily the best reviewed or recommended businesses first. This is according to the research you've done. Okay, the closed ones. Um, well, to a certain extent, I mean, if they have closed down, um, then, of course, then it's going to be one of the different factors. To look into the full process, though, Patrick, is a very, very complicated the process of all these different things. Um, but, yeah, there's many different factors which come into play. Oh, the closest, sorry, that's what you were saying. It seems to me that when I search for a service, it shows the closest ones first and necessarily uh, not. No, true, it won't necessarily... It's just uh, according to what, how important that factor of distance is. And often Google, of course, will choose one which is the closest, if that's what you really need to get to there, to get that food or whatever it might be. But there will be factors which will be sort of, as we're pulling it down from being right at the top. Um, so they will take many different factors into account, but also, of course, the the distance as well but all of those different things now, i can't really defend or state what the full algorithm of course is but you know obviously all of these different factors do come in play okay um so three steps to create a search ad so create a campaign in google ads pick the right keywords and then write a compelling ad so of course with the creating of the campaign you know you choose where geographically you want your ad to be shown demographically. You know, uh, then select your bid strategy and daily budget. Very important you set the budget. Find keywords. You know, it's important to brainstorm good keywords to bid on. Uh, and then that might be relevant to your target audience. And conduct some market research and ask questions about your product or services. Find out the kind of questions that people, your clients maybe already are asking or your competitors on social media, a lot of those questions are coming up. You can also use those to assist. So try online tools like Google Keyword Planner. Remember that's in ads.google.com, that's in Google Ads, to check the value of your keywords. And then of course you can create ad copy in order to create good ads. We need to understand what our target customer wants. And some ad, um, some ad copy tips. Understand what your customer really wants. You know, use you you know use your keywords, but don't overstuff your copy with keywords. And experiment with um, with trying A B testing as well. A couple of the different things to help you there. All right, questions. Let me see now. Are there any further questions? I know I did answer. I was discussing there with Patrick briefly there, and also smart study and diving. Um, any further questions at this stage? All answered, I think. <laughs> ah. All answered, yes. Okay, um, excellent. So let's move now on to the next section. We've only actually got 12 minutes left. So now boosting your presence on Google. So let's go over a couple of different points. All right, so... This is here now with, uh, this is um, the old version. It used to be test my site. Now it is, um, uh, what is it called now again? Sorry, my apologies. I don't have it right here for me to check, but it's um, it's test, uh, not test my site. I shouldn't have looked at that name. You see, it distracted me. But there's a way of doing it which is very similar, um, which we do actually use. Um, for checking the particular page. The other way of doing it is with Google Search Console. Google Search Console will give you quite a lot of um, information and feedback. Sometimes it'll be quite technical, but you can always um, go through and uh, you, can, you can always Google that and find out how best to describe it. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so for adding another area to your existing Google Google Business profile listing, absolutely, um, you can add up to you can have up to ten different areas. So you can go through their location, have a look for the location in the in the admin, go into the location, and then add location. Should be able to see that there. Okay, Patrick. Okay, um, so yes. Um, Let's move on to this now. So claim and verify your business listing. Of course, edit your details, add or change photos. You know, keep checking it out, seeing how it's showing to people. Respond to reviews, very, very important, positive and negative. And then also, you can also, of course, add managers of this. So there's not only you, if there's more than one person who's running the company, you can have other people who are actually assisting and helping, and you can be having them there as well. No problem, Patrick. So all of these different things are very, very important. Make sure that it is up and alive and things are happening on it. That's what I recommend more than anything. Um, so create a new website hosted by Google for free. Now, this is one of the things you can do. I'll just take myself off. No, I've got the wrong screen. It doesn't help. Um, I'll take myself off the screen so you can see it a little bit better. If you've got a Gmail, you can actually set up a... Google site. Now, one of the things about the Google site, it is quite sort of basic, the, the context. The, but you can go on to your company, you know, your company name.business.site, and then, of course, you can access it through there because then you, that's where you'll be saving it. But the useful thing is you can set one up. And sometimes, certainly for people who are wanting to set it up really fast, get us get a website up there. We normally recommend this because it's free of charge and anything, but get it up, up there and running. And and it used to be not this way. It used to be a problem when putting it, trying to put it onto the domain. But now you don't have to publish it there. You can publish it across to the domain that you own. And then, and then you know, it works fine. Um, I mean, obviously, there's different types of um, website builders that you can use. Of course, Wix, uh, Weebly. There is uh, WordPress. There's um, there's many different ones. Uh, Shopify, for example, for selling, particularly. The uh, Squarespace for business. There's masses of different builders, um, uh, but to a certain extent, the uh, actually building up. Uh, uh, Building a website with you know Google Sites is going to be quite simple. But the point is, if you need a website fast and quick, then go ahead and use that website. It, or, or you could even try out, try out before you actually publish it, because you don't have to pu publish it. You could build one up and have a play around with it before you actually use another builder to set up a website. But of course, okay, so Google My Business. A Google Business Profile accepts images in JPEG and PNG formats uh, with file sizes 10 KB uh, and 5 megabytes. So quality is really important. So choose photos that are well lit, in focus, and large enough to save clearly. Now, they do recommend minimum dimensions are 720 pixel wide by 720 pixels high. Okay, that's 720 by 720. And finally, images should be, you know, real. In other words, not stock, stock art. We recommend more than anything. It's, it's your team, the people. That helps a lot. And there's another button. Sorry, this is now with Google Business Profile. There's another button on the dashboard labeled Add Virtual Tour. It's an optional feature. It is used uh, to add a 3D tour of the business powered by Google Google's uh, Street View technology. Uh, click the button to see examples, learn more, and connect with a Google trusted photographer to get a free quote. And trusted photographers are not Google employees, but they are certified to create these virtual tours for Google My Business listings. Okay. Um, then optimize your business listing. So Google, of course, encourages business owners to actively and ethically ask their customers or clients for online reviews. It's so important to have those online reviews. Um, and sometimes it's very difficult to get people to do them. If they're visiting your store and everything, you could ask them as they're there, could you please, just whilst we're standing here, things like that, or even offering them some sort of like a 20% off if they fill it in within, I don't know, within a day or something like that. It's important, of course, to note that online reviews can impact customer trust. You know, it can, you know, with the rates and with the click through, you know, rates and even rankings. So to make it easier to ask for reviews, you can build a simple link 
to share with your customers to give you a review as well. It's another way of doing it. And ask them to open a separate browser and search for themselves on Google. They can then click to leave a review and copy the URL. They can share this with um, customers, you know, via you know your website or local media channels. So all of these things can help. And make sure, please, you respond to every Google review, positive and negative. Writing for social media is the other talk where we talk a little bit more in depth about that. And then use posts, uh, customers, um, to to basically to tell customers what is new, you know, updates, cinema thing. Um, and also, you know, uh, share special offers, particularly, um, you know, and promotion with potential customers. So all of these different things you put on there so people can read about them. There you can see some delicious food there at the bottom, which feel they are obviously advertising as well. Boost your digital marketing through insights. Now, all different social media, including a Google Business Profile, there is always for some form of analytics, and you can get this to help you a lot. Just take myself off, no, leave it on the screen. Take myself off the screen just so you can see it a little bit better. Um, so, you know, it gives you a little bit of information there. All right, pausing for questions. Let me just see if there's any questions at this point. Um, I don't think there are. In fact, I can actually see the chat anyway. Um, but I believe there are none for now. <laughs> No, nope, no questions. Never mind. So, if but don't forget, we've got the next four minutes officially. Um, if there are any questions, do fire away. We're here to help as best we can. Obviously, um, I understand. Unfortunately, sometimes when you don't get a response, sometimes from the different divisions of Google, it's it's not helpful at all. We apologize for that. Um, but the problem is, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's often the department that you need to get hold of, often not not sort of general Google one there. Okay, so what are your next steps? Okay, we've covered quite a few different things. One of the biggest things is, of course, putting yourself on the map with Google Business Profile, um, as well as appearing when people are searching for different things. So it's a form of search engine optimization. Um, it would be if your business is the... Uh, sorry, I just, no, no, yeah. Uh, if your business is the only one um, in that particular area, you will be appearing there when people are searching for it. If there are many in the same area, you will see a little map and you'll see the pinpoints so people can click on the different pinpoints. Uh, that's correct, Patrick. Um, sorry, there's a question. Indeed, there is. Thank you very much. Um, you can create a web page for free, correct, but you need to pay for a domain, correct. Now, domain you pay once a year, um, and generally speaking, you you should really be using a host as well, the host you pay every month. Um, so those are the two areas, domain and host. But um, yeah, and of course, there are some builders you pay for. A lot of builders are free. Um, for example, if you're using WordPress, um, if you're using WordPress.org, then it's free. WordPress.com, it isn't free, but the point is then you're taking on WordPress to be your host. Um, yeah, so um, with WordPress, uh, normally I recommend WordPress.org because it is free. And one of the things with WordPress.com, which of course, no doubt is very good because of course WordPress is assisting you, the company, um, you don't have quite as much flexibility with what you can put in there. With WordPress.org, you have a little bit more plugins and everything that you can put in there and more themes, masses of themes. Okay, but there's a lot to take away from here with all these different areas. Um, I hope this helps you a lot with the different things. One of the things as well with your website, talking of websites, is of course starting up a blog so that you, your website is active as well, all of these different areas. If there's a post which is of course you're putting across onto your Google business profile, that's another way that people could find you as well. So using making use of all these different things so that you are appearing and there to help people more than anything, that helps masses, okay? All right. Um, so just to remind you, free one-to-one -one mentoring. Uh, if you're part of a small business or charity in the UK, unfortunately, it's only in the UK at present. Thank you very much, um, Roshane. She'll give you the, the, the um, link there. You're very welcome there, Smart Study and Living. 
I'm sorry, <laughs> just reading the, the full full note is great there. Um, so, uh, so there's that free one to one mentoring, great opportunity. We'll help you and assist you with the different things. All right, so everyone, we've just got one minute left. Exactly. Uh, thank you for all your questions because there have been questions which have been great, but directly on the chat, which has been really, really lovely. We're going to wrap up here as we are literally out of time. I hope that has been a useful dive into actually setting up with Google Business Profile and how it can how it can help you and you can use it and everything today. As I mentioned at the beginning of the session, if you are interested in more training from Google Digital Garage, there are a few ways you can continue learning. We are running many more Google Digital Garage webinars in different subjects. Um, if you would like to check out the schedule of webinars, please see the information on this in the description below. There will be different topics available to watch, and we'll be updating the schedule regularly. So keep an eye on it so you don't miss out on any of the courses. Also, if you would like to carry on learning online in your own time, check out the Google Digital Garage website for more online tra uh, training courses, which are available to you 24-7. There's one called Fundamentals of Digital Marketing I'd recommend, for example. There's quite a few hours, but they're spot into many different videos. Finally, if you have any feedback or questions on today's session, please provide it now. If you want to go even further, there's a team at the digitalgarage.co.uk, which is also at the bottom of the description below. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Roshan. You've been fabulous for joining today. We look forward to welcome you again to another Google Digital Garage training session soon. Thank you. <laughs>